Hello, hello. My name is Lauren, and I'm the content marketing coordinator. I forget my title all the time. I'm here at Adventure Aquarium. Hello, I'm John Rossi. I'm a touring drummer with a passion for animal conservation. When I'm on the road, I spend as much time as possible visiting zoos, aquariums, and conservation organizations. Now, I want to share those places with you. I'll be talking to keepers, vets, conservationists, anyone who can help me in my mission of connecting my people to animals through their people. Join me on my raw safari. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Raw Safari Podcast. Y'all, this is an episode that I am really excited to be bringing to you all because it is not just about an incredible professional in our industry here, but it is about a good friend of mine. Uh, Lauren Belcher of Adventure Aquarium and I have become buds. And this is one of those episodes. If you've been listening for a while, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. We get a little goofy. We have a whole lot of fun. We're having a really good time together. And, you know, occasionally we go slightly off script. Okay, that's an understatement, y'all. This might be the episode of all the episodes that is just... Two friends talking, and you get to be, um, you know, a fly on the wall, so to speak. Uh, And so it's it's a lot of fun. It's different for Raz Safari. Um, One thing I will tell you is that even in the episodes where we go a little off the rails, I tend to do a lot of editing because, you know, we're all hanging out. We're all being friends. We're all having a good time. Um, Sometimes you go a little bit off script or whatever, and, and I like to tighten things up. I really didn't do that in this episode, except for a few maybe misspeak moments. What you're hearing is exactly what happened in the room. And that even includes towards the end when my next guest, the person you'll be hearing interviewed next week, showed up and we just brought her on in and kept having a party. Uh, This is a really good time, y'all. I also think this is an episode that really relates to everyone's lives because we get into social media a lot and into how that feels when you're on those crazy, uh, you know, Insta, Twit, Gram, book things. And I don't know. I just think it's, it's, I think it's a good conversation. I'm really excited to be bringing it to y'all. So, uh, I want to do that. Before I do quickly, though, uh, just a friendly reminder, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Make sure you're following along on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, wherever, at Raw Safari. It's at Raw Safari Pod on TikTok. And um, if you would like to help support the pod, you can do so for as little as $3 a month. Uh, by going to patreon.com slash rossafari. You get some bonus audio from time to time, including uh, earlier this week, I actually released a short, uh, about 10 minute long patron exclusive episode of me just kind of talking to patrons about some things. So if you want to hear me ramble more, you can go and become a patron. Uh, and other than that, I think it's it's time. So uh, here is my interview with the Sea Star of the Year at Adventure Aquarium, Lauren Belcher. I'm here at Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey. We're right across the river from Philadelphia. I can see it. I can <laughs> yeah. see it right I know. now. You it's can see it right behind you. me. There yeah. it is. Yeah, people, little known fact, we have the best waterfront view of Philadelphia. So come on out. You can have a beer or a non-alcoholic beverage and enjoy the skyline. But yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, she turned around when she said that, which is why it sounded weird. Oh, I apologize. She how microphones work. I'm sometimes. sorry. So this is one of those episodes <laughs> where I'm going to be interviewing someone who is a friend, uh, which I know they always get a little goofier, and I know that y'all like a lot. Um, but so Lauren is the person who I have been coordinating all of my adventure aquarium adventures it's me with and um we've gotten to be buds we've hung out here we've talked we've laughed we text we make fun of people online um all the things and uh so now now she's in here for an interview and i'm very excited about this i am excited to be here this is 
something I didn't think I would get to do. So I'm excited to be included. Yay. Yay. All right. So let's dig in to you. Okay. Who the hell do you think? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this feels like therapy. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So tell me about your childhood. No. Yeah, but, oh, so. God. <laughs> Off the record. <laughs> so, um, no, but so, okay. You do PR stuff here, mm -hmm. digital content, whatever, yes. stupid title. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm curious, like, how you got into that. Yeah. Part. Yeah, it's a great question. It's kind of random because a lot of people – don't really get into the field I'm in the way I did. So my background, my undergrad is in natural resources with a focus on conservation biology. And when I first graduated, I worked with the USGS doing breeding bird surveys with a lot of data collection, which was really, really cool. And I realized I love organizing data. Um, and from there, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was a fidget toy because I must fidget <laughs> while speaking. Um <laughs> Too much to do. Um, We've also had almost no eye contact during no, this interview no. so far. I'm this really bad amazing. at eye contact. <laughs> really bad at it. I'm trying. I like have to remind myself in my head, like, and look up. One, two. Yeah, no. There's a lot of things. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, then I worked at Swaro National Park as a biotech for about four years, which was really, really fun. Um, I like to say it was like, the highlight of my career, though I haven't been in careers for that long. And also, I'm sure you mean before Adventure Aquarium. Yes, cough, before, of cough. course. Yes, of course. Yes. It's the best job of my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do really like it for what it affords me. Um, but yeah, so I worked as a biotech, which was really, really cool. Um, I did a ton of field work, which would be anything from um, invasive species removal to um, surveying for different ungulates, um, Gila monsters, swarrows, different types of nurse plants. And then also my favorite part was when I got to be part of the education team and I would take kiddos or adults out um, into the wild and we would do um, field work with them, which was cool because nice. I really think it's important to do community science with your community. Um, so it was cool because I had the background in biology and I was able to kind of mix it with education, which I really loved. And then I randomly fell into social media because I realized my national park didn't really have a social media presence. And myself um, with one of my coworkers, we kind of took it upon ourselves and started their Instagram at Swarrow National Park, go follow. And um, <laughs> started their Instagram kind of worked on all their social media and it was kind of like our side project since we were still in the natural resources department. Um, and it was really fun and it took off and yeah, it kind of went from there. I, uh, after your, if you've done a lot of field work or physical activity, manual labor, as you know, it gets very hard on your body. Um, and I had two, probably one big fall that kind of messed up my back that compounded from an earlier accident. Um, and I just couldn't do the level of field work I was doing anymore. So I randomly saw that the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum, which is another accredited zoo and aquarium. That in, place is insane. It is insane. Go follow them at yes. Desert Museum. It's amazing. It is. Um, it's incredible. So you've been there? I've been there. I actually uh, was going to interview the oh, yeah? president CEO or something for oh, the podcast. Oh, nice. And then there was a new president CEO oh. happening. Um, I don't think there was anything bad. I just think yeah. like career change stuff. Right, right, right. But, and I, then I wasn't there anymore. Interesting. And I was like, no, I really want to go. Yeah. But I mean, it's amazing. It's yeah. so cool there. I love it. That's the best, like zoo vibe place I've ever been to in my opinion because it's very much focused on like the natural habitat um, which is really cool and then it's also a botanical garden so I love the desert museum um, but I got hired to do their social media as well as write for their blog I helped with all their events I did their symbolic adoption program and a bunch of other random things and so I kind of found myself in social media and I got that job because my boss at the time, she had followed uh, Sora National Park and she saw their content that they put out and she was like, this is exactly what I want. It's a mixture of humor with education, um, which has always been my vibe. I don't think we should take ourselves too seriously ever. Um, 
and it seems to resonate with people. Um, I saw a lot of national parks when I was working there were very serious and to the point and scientific. And I understand that there's a time and place for that. But to me, social media is sometimes not that if you want to reach people outside of your bubble. Um, so I kind of started making like sassier posts. Um, one time I did a post that was, um, we have like basically something about like, we have the best sunsets in the entire United States. There's no competition. Um, and other national parks started like popping in like big ones, like Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Yellowstone. (laughs) And they're like, Oh, you think so? And I started, um, it's called hashtag park wars. You can look it up. (laughs) Um, I started it and then I left for my honeymoon and it became this huge thing. And I'm bummed that I wasn't there to be a part of it, but I like had no service and I come back and, um, like the education staff, they were all upset with me in a fun way because (laughs) I dropped this bomb and then they got a ton of press, a ton of press. Um, and I kind of like to think that that was part of national park social media becoming a little less serious. A lot of people have seen now like the National Park Service Instagram mm-hmm. ex- uh, specifically and Twitter is very like sassy and funny. You know, they have the stuff that's like about like bears, like push your friend in front of the bear if you want to get rid of the bear and all that, which is hilarious. Um, and I just like to say it wasn't always like that. So I like to think I had a little bit of an influence on I being like weird, but I, like I don't know. That. No, I, I, I think that makes sense. I think it only takes one person to change that's things so sometimes. Nice of you. And yeah. I, I really agree with you. And yeah. also, I mean, not being serious, like when I started this podcast, I was literally like, here I am, this big goofy guy mm-hmm. who isn't in this world at all, who's decided to do a podcast about yes. it. Basically, this is the dumbest idea ever. No. <laughs> and I decided to be like super like science-y yeah. with my professional drumming self and yeah. making bad puns. And I mean, you know me, I'm a goober. <laughs> And um, my first couple episodes are informative and mm-hmm. interesting, but, like, I didn't crack a joke. Really? And, like, somewhere around, like, the third or fourth episode, so I don't even remember what it was, but somebody gave me such a softball yeah. that I made the dumb pun. I yes. made the John Rossi joke. And all these people, and there weren't that many people listening back then, and, like, a high percentage of the, you know, 20 that listened or whatever mm-hmm. reached out and were like, oh, you have a personality <laughs> or like my friends that were trying to listen to it were like, Hey, oh, that's funny. the first time it felt like you were yeah. doing this podcast. Right. And it was such an eye opening thing. Yeah. And it changed my whole approach. Yeah. And now I'm just a goofball, right. like honest. And I still right. share the info. And you got more comfortable but, and, to and be yourself. Instantly. Yes. My numbers went up. Yes. And like people who reach out to me, to talk about the podcast, they don't usually talk about, you know, oh, I'm learning so much. That comes, and I do hear that. And right. I've, I've got amazing stories from this pod of things that have happened mm-hmm. that I, I, I cling to, that I, whenever things are tough, I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're having an impact. Mm-hmm. But so many people say they stick with it because I'm a goofball. Yeah. And, like, in my Zoo News episodes, I've started putting at the beginning, like, five minutes about my life or a funny story that happened yeah. with me. Or even, like, when my grandfather died, talking about him, right. like, real stuff. Right. And people love that right. and reach out to me more about that than to the coolest yeah. guests. Because you're making you that know? connection. Yeah. Yeah. And so I do think – I think that's really important. Yeah. And I think that it's hard to to learn that for, a, for an individual, mm-hmm. much less for a – community like national yes. parks or zoos and aquariums right. sometimes, right. you know? Yeah. And um, that is something – one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you, you know, on here was because you've had such an impact on the social media at Adventure Aquarium. Thank you. I mean, I've loved this place for a long time, mm-hmm. but I've only recently started to love the social media. Thank you. That's so it's, nice. It's true, though. It's You really come up with some cool stuff, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but some of the dumb – <laughs> but cool things that you do yes. are my favorite and make me feel like I'm here. Yes. Because when I'm here, even though I'm trying to learn, even though I actually read signs, I'm the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love running through. And I love the fact that when I get here, I have to run to see turtles yes, first. Yes, of course. Skipping all the other cool stuff of that course. I like. Yes. Like little blue penguins, who cares? Yeah, go see turtles. Yeah, yep. yeah. And like when you do the um, the Monday feature where yeah. you like run to your favorite thing, that me yes. at the aquarium yes. when I get here. What's excited. your favorite animal? <gasps> we yes. should do what's your favorite animal at the aquarium. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. We could do that. Okay. If we'll it's do. not too busy, we'll do okay. it today. Cool, cool, okay. cool. <laughs> but like, I am so, I it, it makes me feel like I'm here. Yeah. And it makes me feel like I'm with you and yeah. with the biologist that you're using oh, that good. time or whatever. And I feel a connection to that so much more than I do when yeah. it's like, 
you know, these are our hippos. Right. Hippopotamuses are blah, 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 which right. is also important. Right. And you do get that stuff in there too. Yeah. But it's done in such a relatable way. Thank you. And yeah, I think it's really cool. That means um, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But so, okay, so you launch Park Wars. I did that, and yes. go from there. And, oh, okay, well, that was just one little fun viral moment I had. Um, of the many. Of the many. There's been a few. <laughs> That sounds so ridiculous. Um, I'm sure there's like more that I can't even remember. Um, that's also sounds cocky. I don't mean it that way. No, no, no. It's literally it's that true. I have a crap memory. Well, also, but, but also can part of it crap? is just, yeah, you can say oh. anything. I mean, you guys are the ones who I'm worried about the content with. I've we dropped that bombs on here before. So, you know. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Um, but yeah, so I then worked at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum, which was absolutely incredible. Um that was kind of my first time stepping into a marketing role um, instead of a biology-esque role. And I felt like a imposter. I felt so out of place in multiple ways um, because one, the marketing people kind of didn't take me seriously. But then also the biology people didn't take me seriously because I was the social media girl. right? And that was like my biggest, I don't know, hurdle almost personally and professionally because it held me back because I felt like, oh, what am I doing here? Like, I don't know. I don't know crap about marketing. I don't know because I knew how to do good social media, but did I know how to do campaigns? Can I tell you what reach and impressions and all these keywords mean and whatever? And so what I found was really successful and what I do to this day is, and kind of what I've always done, like you were saying, once you got back to who you were in your podcast and expressed yourself, your podcast became more popular. Once I kind of just threw away my preconceived notions and like what was frightening me and making me feel like an imposter, I did so much better. So I kind of curated myself to each person that's very much masking in a way. <laughs> but um, so if I was going to go talk to the zookeepers, um, when they first met me at my last job at the Desert Museum and here, I'm very um, open about, hey, my background's in conservation biology. Hey, I used to intern at the Reed Park Zoo. I guess I forgot about that part. Fancy. Yes, I did that. That was fun. <laughs> um, and I know about animals in a zoo setting. I know about animals in an aquarium setting. I know about conservation. I'm super passionate about this. I'm passionate about the animals you are passionate about. And I want to show that through the screen, um, which I think made people much more comfortable and confident in my abilities. Once they realize, like, I'm not just going to come in and be like, I want a picture of the porcupine doing a headstand while it is eating a pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving, you know, like, <laughs> I was aware of the limitations. I was aware of the safety, which is huge. Um, and I was, I think a big thing is I'm really aware of the time that zookeepers have. They have no time, <laughs> you know, they have a huge job to do. And I've been, always been very respectful of, okay, let's uh, schedule something, but I understand if we need to do it later. Um, hey, if you're not comfortable with this today, we don't have to do it. Um, very much focused on making the keepers and then their bosses. So the curators comfortable and confident in my abilities so that I'm then able to get even better content to share because they're confident that I'm not going to put out anything that could be taken in a, in a bad way where we could get, you know, under fire for something. Um, but yeah, so I think that's one of my talents is really connecting with people and finding that common ground. Um, but yeah, so I worked at the Desert Museum for a while. I did events, which was super fun. I really liked working on events and kind of bringing forth my creativity side and organization and being like a leader in that sense. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And then I moved to Philadelphia during the pandemic. That Always was, a good time. That Always was a good time. A great memory. Gas was a dollar oh nine. Um, 
and I found the aquarium and I started working here and it's been great. I'm in grad school, so I work part time now so that I can focus on that and I'm oh. doing a degree in biology. So Yeah, you're doing Project Dragonfly, right? Yeah, so you're doing I. that right? Yeah. Twins. Yay. Woo. High five. We just did a high five on the yeah, podcast. We did. Such nerds. Yeah. yeah. So how far along in Dragonfly are you? I am I don't know. I feel like it's been forever. Yeah. Um, I'm supposed to graduate fall of 24. Okay. So do the math from there. Okay. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah I don't know. Yeah, I don't, no, time sense. is so like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's also such a weird like program because it's not structured as much like a normal school thing no. necessarily. Right. So like, yeah, it's not like, I'm like, yes, I'm a rising junior. Yes. No, 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 no. No, no I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A but, rising so junior. Is that a thing? In like, yeah. High school and college. Oh. Like when you're like, when you, when you've kind of finished a year, oh. like, like my, my son is in second that's grade. That's what I was going to say. But that, that, that's <laughs> going like to be ending zodiac. soon. And it's, oh no, no, not that son. My S O N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, yes, oh I'm God. an Aries, just in case you, you couldn't tell. Pisces. <laughs> but um, but no, but um, so my son is in second grade, and like that will be over soon, and then he will be a right. rising third grader. It sounds oh. weirder when you say the numbers, but yeah, that's, I see, I see, that's I see. what that. Okay, yeah, I'd never heard that. There you go. Cool, fancy. See, we fancy are learn an educational podcast. podcast in many ways. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um. Uh, that's interesting because one of the questions I was going to ask you, mm-hmm. having no idea what your background was, <laughs> is um, if you were doing Dragonfly so that you would feel more like, mm. you know, in this world. Because that's what I'm doing. Right, right. I'm specifically oh, doing cool. it for the podcast right. sake and to be uh, maybe taken more seriously, although I really haven't had that problem other than up in my brain hole. But, right. you know, isn't I that where that. most of our problems are? Yes, it is. But so I All guess not them. because you studied Kanbai. Oh, right. I did. Kanbai? What the – I don't know what you did there, but I liked it. Okay. Um, so we can roll with it, but I, okay, I don't yeah. know if we should repeat it. I'm never saying anything. <laughs> you do you. It's all good. Oh, boy. I anyway. <laughs> Come bio. Come bio, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right. In Spanish, that means with biology. <laughs> <laughs> Vamos a la playa. <laughs> Anyway, into our, so yeah. let's talk about Adventure <laughs> Aquarium because we have gone completely off the rails. We have, it's fine. Which I love. So um, you mm-hmm. had something really cool happen. I did. Which is that you have, you've had many things happen. I did. Cool. But <laughs> you were named Employee of the oh, Year yeah. at Adventure Aquarium. And I want to talk sure. about that for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Mostly though, like, I mean... That's crazy. Yeah. There are so many people here there are. who work such crazy hours they do. and dedicate their lives to animals. They do. And you got employee of the year. I did. That's really impressive. That means you Thank really you. had an impact. So <laughs> can you tell me what you did to earn that? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, it's C Star of the Year. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> Anyway, C star of the year. <laughs> and we can go look at my plaque later. Um, no. Oh, like you didn't already send me pictures of it. Did I? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, did I? No. How embarrassing. Um, I want to be very transparent to the people of the podcast that um, if I'm not right now, I got very red when he brought that up because <laughs> true. I don't like talking about it. And I instantly started sweating. So thank God I'm wearing a cardigan. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was named C star of the year. I had no idea that was going to happen. We had a like employee all company breakfast basically where they were going to talk about everything. And it was on one of my days off. I was talking to my boss and I was like, do I really got to go? And she played it off so cool. She did great. She was like, this is Shannon who you talked to yesterday. She was was like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. You know how I just had an accent there. That was cool. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) No. Um, anyway, she was like, you have to come in, you know, they're kind of being weird about it. And she played it off and I was like, oh, she's like, yeah, you know, the man. And I was like, oh, the man. <laughs> like, she totally got me because normally it is very hard to surprise me. I think just because I'm too hyper vigilant, um, which is a positive and a negative. And so I came in and my coworker, Amaja, is kind of looking at me. We're at this table. I'm at the very back. And they start talking about like sea star of the year, da da da. And Amaj is like looking over at me, kind of like bouncing in her seat, smiling. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you looking at me like that? And then they start to say something up there about like, oh, social media. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I literally like slammed my head down because I was like embarrassed. <laughs> 
<laughs> hit my cranberry juice. It went into my hair. <laughs> And I was like, and they immediately oh my took God. the award away. Yeah, and then and they're, they're like, like no, not her. Mind. She's clearly not all there. <laughs> Little do they know. Um, but yeah, so then I was like sitting there, and then my coworker Chris next to me was like, "You have to go up." And I was like, "No, I don't have to go up." And he's like pushing me, and so I go up, and they hand me this like massive trophy with like a star on it, and like you know, intrusive thoughts went out that day because the first thing I say was like, "Oh, you could really murder someone with this." What the heck? <laughs> Why did I do that? Immediate regret. Immediate. Like, I'm in front of everyone. Into a mic. Oh, my God. Like, what, Lauren? I couldn't even. So I take that, and I'm like, well, great. Good job. And, you know, I very quickly, um, you know, said, like, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Couldn't do it without all of you, which is so generic, but is so, so true. Um. Also, I would like to say I can do social media and be in front of a camera, but if I'm getting called out in front of people, I would like to crawl into ocean realm and just swim with the sharks and like, that's the end. That's it for me, whatever. Um, So it was not my favorite moment. So if anyone from the aquarium is listening, I do want to say that I appreciate everyone I work with. And there is only one way that I am able to get that award. And it's that is through everyone that I work with being so open to my crazy ideas, um, learning how to be on social media, being open to being on social media, because a lot of people are afraid of being on camera, which is totally valid. I'm still afraid to be on camera sometimes. Um, but we work through it and people actually come up to me saying like, Oh, I'm really proud of myself. Like I did something that like scared me before and now I kind of want to do it again. And I really love harnessing, that confidence in my coworkers. And I tell them all the time, like, Hey, this is something you need to add to your resume. Like immediately go onto your little Google file, add in this thing. Like, Oh, I worked with the social media person. I created videos about education. Um, anyway, I'm getting off track. Sorry. It's <laughs> very calming for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, your question as we started with was why me, you know, it out of all the people that work here, I think, a huge portion of people deserve employee of the year. And to get Excuse that, me, it's C star of the year. C star. I'm so, I can't believe <laughs> you got me. You got me. I am a C star. Just splat on a window. Um, I just always think of finding Nemo and there's like a C star. And he's like dancing. You can't see this, but I'm dancing like a C star. I Y'all, this is a very, it. I wish that, that I had a camera on yeah. this one. This is a very visual, even as visual. talking about this, she is just hiding her face. <laughs> But doing it in such a way that her mouth is not covered so that she can still speak clearly, which I I'm appreciate. I'm trying to be good for the podcast. I'm learning. I took off all my jangly jewelry and I know. Um, but yeah, I don't – I when I received that reward, I, reward? Award. I felt and still feel a little bit of imposter syndrome. Um, I think most of us feel that way when we are recognized um, for the work that we do which I think also makes me think a lot about, well, maybe we need to recognize people a little bit more in general. I know there's a lot of like hubbub and conversation about, you know, everyone getting the green participation award and whatnot. Um, But I think there's a lot of people that are doing incredible work here at the aquarium that um, should be recognized just on a daily basis for doing great job and being a great coworker and a, great human. And, um, and now, yeah, I don't really know how to explain why me. Um, I think that I w- am only able to do my job and show off the aquarium because I have incredibly hardworking coworkers. And I know it sounds really cheesy and it sounds like I'm like trying to like be like, Oh, I'm so humble. Um, but it's true. Uh, I think, you know, anyone here from the front of house staff to, the husbandry team to HR to anyone here. If we don't all work well together, we can't show off the animals. And at the end of the day, that sounds like, you know, we don't want to show them off, but we do want people to come and learn about the animals here. And the best way for us to get people to learn about conservation and be interested about conservation, maybe change their mindset that they previously had is through kind of showing people 
these incredible species, animals and plants um, that are in this world. And I think all of the people I work with are very passionate about that. So that's my long answer to your short question. Thank all right. You. Well, that's all the time we have for now. I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get out. <laughs> no, that that's really that is cool, and I can tell that you're being very authentic with the um the thing that you're saying, despite the fact that you're right. It's what everybody says, <laughs> but like it's often true, and yeah. that's that's important. Yeah. Um. You know, but I I, I still want to dig into this a little oh, no. bit more. Though I'm not letting this go. <laughs> um. Just in terms of like. What you just said is 100% true. Yeah. But what did they say? What was your impact that led to that? Sure. Was it Was it team building stuff? Was it getting bigger numbers? Like right. something led to that other than them just being like, who can we embarrass the most? Uh, <laughs> who will take this award and not kill people with it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, hash, like just disclaimer, that did not happen. Um, you know, I kind of wish they had told me a little bit more preferably in private (laughs) about what, um, what they liked about me. Um, if I'm honest, they basically said kind of generic things at the award ceremony. Um, and also I blacked out immediately once I realized it was me. So I don't remember anything they said, but the stuff that's been said to me from, um, like my bosses and my coworkers, um, is kind of like what you were talking about is, is almost like waking up our social media, if I could say it that way. Um, and giving it a new life that is relatable and, uh, compassionate and funny and a little bit weird and kind of chaotic. I love chaos. Yes. Um, good chaos, of course. Yes. And um, I started our TikTok account. See, and even now I'm like feeling I I feel lame saying that. Um, And I think that's so funny because I'm aware that TikTok has like a huge presence in not just the world, but like the conservation world. It has a huge presence in education. Um, But like, even if I tell people like, oh, I started our TikTok, like, see, I got quieter. (laughs) I started our, I started our TikTok and I got us to over a hundred thousand followers in under a year. And I had a lot of viral videos and yada, yada, yada. Um, I still feel that imposter syndrome because part of me has a little voice that's like, who cares? TikTok's stupid. Social media is stupid. And I will say, honestly, part of me really hates social media. Um, But yeah, I think my, (laughs) we can get back to that later. That was a little drop, but. um, (laughs) I mean, I'm actually with you, so I I get it. yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a love-hate relationship. Um, But yeah, so I, I don't know. I think I, yeah, what I said, I I breathed life into our social media. And also I think a big part of it is I um, created a connection between the marketing team and the husbandry team that was not, to my understanding, was not very prevalent before. I don't know what that was. Sorry. There was just a sound above us. It sounded like a little giant. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, So... If this is our last podcast together <laughs> and this falls, fun. it's been fun. <laughs> da, da, da. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that's a good enough answer. I think just like creating those connections, showing off our team, making our team feel more connected to the aquarium. Because specifically, I also want to make sure that I shout out like our husbandry tra- team is, of course, incredibly vital to the success of the aquarium. But so is our front of house staff. So our guest experiences and our guest services, you know, they deal and do incredible work. That didn't make sense, but they deal with a lot and they do incredible work. They do a lot of the education on the front lines. They work with all the people. They answer all the questions. They deal with all the difficult people. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think one of my goals for this upcoming year is to kind of connect a little bit more with our guest services and guest experiences, because I mostly work with the husbandry team, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, again, another long answer 
to your question. I think I, I think I create really good connections. Absolutely. And I think I make people proud of where they work. That's really cool. And that's important. I mean, that's really important. I think so. And I think you're right, especially on the guest services thing too. I think that's a good idea. I will tell you, I mean, I had back before I was a Mr. Rasafari, I, um, I, I, over, somehow got overcharged for a sea turtle um, meet and greet Uh-oh. here. And um, I realized it when I was here mm-hmm. and, um, you know, went up to the team. And I mean, I was chill. I'm usually chill. Yeah. But, but, you know, just the way that they handled it oh, good. was really good. Yeah. And like that was, you know, those little things make a difference. Mm-hmm. And like it did not take away from my day. Yeah. It did not take away from my experience with adventure. Right. I did not have that vibe of like, Ugh, yeah. If I walk in, I have to see right. that person again, right. you know. Sure. Um, and I, it was cool. It was yeah. quick. It was easy. I, I was frustrated for all of 30 seconds mm-hmm. from the time I realized it to the time that I spoke to them. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, cool, you know, we got you. And I was like, cool. All right, moving on. Yeah, and I right. went and I had a great day at the airport. Perfect. You know, and I'm that so kind of thing is, is cool. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's really important that, you know, teams feel connected. Mm-hmm. In this industry, there is a lot of not that. Yes. And um, I, I can see the, in the social media stuff that you do and also in the fact that you hang out with a lot of these goobers outside of work <laughs> um, that you are, you're doing team building, that this is this is a very tight-knit community. I find it very interesting Um uh, the number of people who follow my Insta and listen to the podcast because of talking to other people here, finding out about it. And then they feel comfortable enough to like reach out to me. Like I've talked to numerous biologists here just on social media in a yeah. like friendly way that yeah. I've not talked to on the pod, right. that I've not met here. Right. But just like, it's like I get to be a small part of that community. Yeah. And because there's that community sense, I don't get that at a lot of facilities. It's mm-hmm. like, I'll meet, you know, Bob at, at a zoo. Mm-hmm. And then the next time I'm there, I'll meet Jay. Mm-hmm. And but Bob doesn't talk to Jane about mm. it and stuff like that. And here it seems like a really big thing. Yeah, you know, most like people know each other pretty yeah. well. It's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah, it. I think it is really good. Of course, there's like you know the separations that we have between like say our bird and mammal team and the fish and invertebrate, but like that's just from when you where you work. Oh well, yeah, but yeah. yes, everyone is very connected and it's cool. And I think um, I'm thinking. That I forgot what I was going to say. So take that out. Excellent. I will do that. Or leave it in. <laughs> or one or the other. Do what you want with it. It's your podcast. <laughs> no, but um, so you mentioned having a love-hate relationship with social media. I do. And I do too. Like mm-hmm. my personal Instagram and my personal Facebook mm-hmm. are basically dead. Yeah. Every once in a while, I will throw up something about a gig or if I get a real cute pic of my kid or something, mm-hmm. I'll throw it up there. But even then, I'm like... I've already texted it to the people that I care about right, saying it. Right, like, I, don't, I don't care if one of my high school friends who I haven't spoken to in right. way too many years uh, sees this picture, yeah. really. But then for Safari, I have to be like, everyone pay attention to yes. me always. Yes. And um, – I am bad at it sometimes and I feel guilty oh, yeah. and I don't keep up my TikTok as much and mm-hmm. I, I should. I have 30 some thousand followers on yeah. there. Go give them stuff. But it's a whole nother Wait, is that app. Ross Safari pause or yeah. TikTok? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. And it's like, eh, yeah. you know, even right. though my following on Insta is smaller, I, I, I like Insta more. Well, and, if you connect with you those know. people more yeah. and when you like a certain p- platform more – it comes through in the work you do. Mm-hmm. So I, definitely I think that's important. That. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I want to do it all. Like, I wish I could get paid to do this. I wish that Safari were more of a job yes. where I could put in more time right. because, you know, it's it's not. Right. And and um, I would put in the time, but even then I'm always like, whoa. Yeah. Is there supposed to be a car back behind us just turning around and driving? Oh, this happens occasionally. Oh, uh, welcome to Why the are you driving Delaware waterfront. Why I'm, are you driving backwards, this sir? This is common. We have uh, vehicles that just come and drive on, on, I don't even know how they do it. It's a pedestrian pathway. I don't know who this is. Sir. Maybe they're getting the trash can. Oh. oh no, no. They're just no. walking. I don't are, are they just trying to avoid to pay for parking at Adventure Aquarium? You know what? That's valid. <laughs> Goodness. Anyway, um, we'll get back to the podcast, but that's insane. Like there is just, there's just the the person there. Yeah. When I first started here, I kind of like alerted people and now I found out that that's just pretty common. All right. Yeah. Well, who knows? They just drive along. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. It's not the worst and weirdest driving I've seen in the Philadelphia area. But, (laughs) um, cool. So uh, tell me about your thoughts though and why you have this love hate relationship. Mm -hmm. I think, so I'm just like you, 
my personal social media has gone to crap since I like when I'm professionally working on social media because I don't have the wherewithal or brain capacity to think of any sort of caption, even if it's like, this is me at the beach. Like I can't, I don't (laughs) care. I don't want to size the photo. I don't want to edit it. I just don't want to. Um, but I do it occasionally because it is fun and I do miss it for fun. But anyway, my love hate relationship happens because I think social media and everyone and anyone has probably said this is can be incredibly toxic. Um, social media really kind of hones in on comparison, which I think as a human species we struggle with um, and can really affect your mental health as someone who like already has like, you know, diagnosed everything. <laughs> I'll just put it there. I was about to list and then I was like, I'll just leave it there. Mystery. Who is she? Um, you can probably just guess by everything that <laughs> that you've said about me. She won't make eye contact. She rambles. She changed subjects quickly. To be she, fair, I didn't say that second or third one. <laughs> That's just evidence That's on just the podcast. <laughs> And I'm literally playing with a fidget toy. <laughs> and I asked, I asked John if he wanted one. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, I just think comparison, you know, this is such a cheesy quote, but it is so true. Comparison is the thief of joy. And when we, even if we know intellectually, you know, from what you're doing with your life, from your job, from your friends, your family, what your family structure looks like to how you physically look, what you are physically doing. Um, It's very easy, even if you're confident in yourself and loving what you're doing, it's hard to see day in and day out people's curated social media and not have that small inkling of like, oh, I want that or I want to look like that or, you know, why, why isn't my family like that, right? So I think especially for youths <laughs> who uh maybe can't discern that difference yet it's it can be very toxic to your well-being and i don't like how i feel when i'm on social media too long just mindlessly scrolling doom scrolling if you will it's such a good name for it's it. a really good name i like hate and love all of the new terms that come out and then everyone uses it. You're like, Oh, doom scrolling, gaslighting, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, they're all very true and good to know the lingo, but yeah, I just feel when I take social media hiatuses, I am, um, more of myself and tapped into what I find is important. Um, hanging out and being with myself or people I love, which I also love myself. So I'm going to put that in that context. (laughs) Um, But so with social media, I have to do it for my job, right? So I am constantly on this like creativity. How can I make something the best it can be grind? And for me to go do it personally ever is not going to happen. I just don't have the bandwidth for that but i mean no but what (laughs) what you said is very real it it comes down to comparison and it comes down to algorithms that don't understand what we're doing right and i will spend an hour coming up with a brilliant caption and get 30 likes right and then post a photo that's slightly blurry because i wasn't really focused on social media that day right and a caption that's like this is a hippo Mm -hmm. and get 200 likes and be like i hate everyone and everything right i remember literally like going super viral with you know the drumming with Mm -hmm. emily the elephant elephant. that was incredible yeah but then like my very next video was me um i was red pandas painting with paintbrushes it's insane and no one cared Mm -hmm. and red pandas usually go more viral than anything i do like in general and i was just like none of this makes sense none of this is logical like whatever i had i had an experience once That I think kind of plays into what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to share two quick stories. So first of all, (laughs) I was on tour. Mm-hmm. With with Million Dollar Quartet and like it's always been my dream to be a touring drummer. Like, yeah, oh, that was it. So like I, love I that you was just dropped that. That was so doing cool. The thing. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm I'm on this tour and I'm literally on a tour bus. Yeah. I am in my bunk on a tour bus like I always wanted to be. You have a right? bunk? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I'm I'm cuddling my my stuffed red panda red yes. and I'm doom scrolling and I'm I come upon somebody who booked 
a small gig at a theater that I wouldn't take the gig probably if I wasn't working because mm-hmm. they can't really afford me. And mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm at, I'm at a certain point in my career and I'm great for this person. But right. I, and I started to feel jealous as I'm mm-hmm. on a tour bus. And I was like, right. I'm putting this down right, right now. Good. And Good luckily I realized that. Yeah. But like. It was a weird moment being jealous that they booked when I was literally – and I don't remember what show it was, but it was like a show that I wouldn't want to do. And I was doing a show that I love. Right. And again, in a bunk on a tour bus being driven to some gas station so I can pee at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, like like the – this is the dream. Yeah. Kind of. And – I have had the same exact thing before. And then recently – I just recently – okay, so I'm doing – I hope no one listens, but whatever. (laughs) I like being open on this podcast. Everyone should listen to this one. Um. I w- I'm, I'm doing a production of a show right now, mm-hmm. and it is a show that I love, and it is not my favorite production of it. Mm-hmm. Um, great people, but just the, the show is a bit of a mess. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw a picture from it with this really excited post, like, ah, coming up on a big weekend of shows, blah, blah, blah. And it didn't register immediately that it was my show. And I started to feel pangs of jealousy for this person. Interesting. And then like, because it, it was just like, I was just scrolling quick and I just yeah. saw a picture of the show and I was like, oh, I would love to be in. That's me. I'm in the <laughs> background of that photo. Wait, <laughs> not only, okay, this picture looks way better than anything we're doing on stage right now. Yeah. And also we have like no audience coming to tonight's show. And like mm. this post is like a big brag about it. Right. And I was like, ew, social media. Gross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what you're talking about. It's that same kind of thing of just like you I was jealous of my own show that right. I didn't want right. to play. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. You know? And I feel but. like that's kind of why like I find myself if I'm gonna be scrolling on social media, I scroll through TikTok more than I do Instagram. Cause I find TikTok has less things that I become I don't know, jealous or want to be a part of and more for me, like whatever my for you page has created more educational type things. So I learn a lot, which I love. But then the problem with TikTok is it's so easy to like be absorbed for like an hour. Right. And that's me being, you know, small (laughs) about my numbers. But yes, I agree. Social media, it's just, it's very addictive. Um, I think that there's just so much that we miss when we're in our phones Um, and I think it's a really easy way to put a patch on, like if you're feeling crappy for that day, you can just scroll through social media and you might actually feel crappier at the end of the day instead of better. Um, so I don't know. I think sometimes I like to say a lot of the times if I didn't work in social media, I would not have social media. Um, and I stand by that Mm -hmm. and there's only a few reasons why I want to keep social media Besides, like, I really do love social media. I love TikTok. I love what I learned from TikTok. Um, But, like, I could be fine with not having that. The only thing is, like, I keep my Facebook active so I can talk to my uncle. Like, Mm -hmm. literally, that is it. Yeah, yeah. I get gig offers from it sometimes. So, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and Um, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, no, that kind of – it's so interesting. You know what's funny? My favorite social media Mm -hmm. for my own usage is Twitter. Really? And Twitter sucks for everyone. But here's why. I don't tweet. Oh, you just I enjoy? I curated uh-huh. a very specific list of very specific interests. Yes. I never look at the suggested page. Mm-hmm. I only look at my follows. Mm-hmm. And unlike the other social media apps out there, they don't even make suggestions like in your feed on Twitter. Even though yeah. I hate everything that's going on with Twitter right now, I can get on Twitter and actually enjoy Every Mm -hmm. single post. And, you know, honestly, like my Instagram is filled with beautiful people because I work in the entertainment industry. Sure. So I'm constantly comparing myself and feeling Mm. bad. Um, And, you know, and then even sometimes like with like zoo content and stuff and the educational content, I start to feel why aren't I doing this? Why why am I watching this video instead of, you know – getting out of bed, mm. taking a shower and talking about something I know and right. putting it out into the right. world. And it's like, it's a weird vibe. Right. But at the same time, my podcast would have six listeners if it wasn't for sure. social media. Sure. And I have learned amazing things from social media. Yep. And my Zoo News podcast, 
people send me articles and tag me in articles all the time. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I was doing three, four hours of research a week just to find stories to cobble together. Now I have so many that there are weeks, I think this week I I was able to use 40% of the stories I was sent. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. So it's like, it is a beautiful thing. But then also I get on and one of my friends has decided to, you know, post some photo of them, you know, working out. And I'm like, Mm. "Mm, my belly's gotten big, you know, like it is what it is. It's, it's like, it's really interesting. It's like mm-hmm. a minefield in one way, but then also like it's the – it's just all human knowledge. Yeah. You know? It's like a multiverse of – Yeah. It's, it's like a library but virtual and I yeah, love it. But it I mean is. I wouldn't have gotten this job if I didn't have social media because I met Sam who's a husbandry uh, – person here. Biologist? Biologist is her term. <laughs> She's outside that door behind you. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> um, because I met her through social media and that's how I learned about the aquarium because right. I didn't know about the aquarium when I moved here. Oh, wow. So okay. that's kind of yeah. how I got this job. Yeah. And I mean, I also met Sam through social media right. and, and now and we're going to do an interview. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, yeah, the, these things are, are, it's, it's, it's interesting. It it's, is interesting. It's very interesting. I agree. Yeah. There will be papers, like I'm sure there already are some, but like, it will be interesting. I won't be there, but 100, 200 years from now. Yeah. Uh, see what people think of this time. Yeah. And I'm the misinformation. At- and, you know, I had like 10 people send me a baby peacock the other day and it's fake. It's it's just, it's an AI art rendering. It's interesting. beautiful. But it's anyone who's ever seen AI. a baby bird knows what they do right. and don't look like. Right. And it was this like gorgeous little like adorable. I wish it was real. Right. You're like, I, I don't look like that. I was like, no. Yeah. But um, yeah, but so many people just sent it to me with the best intentions. Right. Have you seen this? I didn't realize. Right. I'm like, that's really no. interesting. But yeah. Yeah. AI is going to take over. We'll see. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I'm actually doing part of my research for this semester for my grad program is about social media. So I'm excited to kind of see what I learn and how social media can be a benefit and a detriment to conservation work. Um, and hopefully bring some of that back into work. So I'm really cool. excited about that. That's cool. So we have more stuff, but Can shall we, we let pause? Sam in? Yes, let's yes. let her in. Okay. I'm going to keep this all uh, okay. recording for now. Let's just keep to it kind on. of play with it and have fun. Let's see what happens. Sam. Next victim. I'm sorry. Did you do your hair? I'm good. Did you do your hair for this? I blew it out last night. Girl, it's a podcast. <laughs> I mean, it's going to go up. Hi. Hi. It's so good to so see you. Kind of this girl's on point 100% of the time. With my hair, am I shutting this? Yes, please. Yeah. We need the quietness. And of course she did her hair. Have you seen her social media presence? I know, I know. She always has to She's do She's like, everything. look, I'm stunning. Where am I sitting? For here for You're now. You're going to sit there, but yeah, have, have a seat. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it's going to go immediately up, though. This is a, I'm going down the shore tomorrow hair. Nice. Uh, nice. Awesome. Welcome. Hi. So just so you know, we are currently recording. I don't usually do this, but I'm being goofy. And oh, like our He's in a silly, goofy mood. Our interview has been ridiculous because, you know, we're buds. Because we're, we're crazy. Fun. Yeah. So um, this will just probably, some of this will creep on and just kind of okay. show people. I like showing people like how the, the stuff gets made. Yeah. But um, yeah. So we will, uh, <laughs> we, we will do your interview here and then finish up yours. Is that how you want to do yeah, this? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We'll be back after the next interview. Ooh. Okay, so I lied, and we're just going to keep recording because Lauren didn't uh, listen I when didn't. I asked if uh, I we should stop. So, yeah, okay, sorry. very good, all good, all good, friend. So, <laughs> um, y'all, this is what the podcast normally sounds like sometimes, and then I edit it down. But since Lauren and I are friends, we're just kind of gonna. You're hearing how this we're gets just made. winging it. Yeah, you're so, with us. So Sam is with us now, not on mic, but um, she's here, and we're going to do an episode with her. But if you hear laughter in the background or random shouted out comments, that is that is why. <laughs> That's a ghost. <laughs> yes. It's, it's whoever was knocking on the ceiling earlier. So. Oh, true. The Yeti. But, um, so I want to talk about something with social media mm-hmm. that Sam actually brought yes. up. Yes. Which is trolls. Ooh, dun, dun, and, dun. Um, you know, there's a lot of this, this anti-captivity world out there. Mm-hmm. And there are people who you could actually train Anchor to speak English and have Anchor say, no, I'm very happy. They take great care of me. And these people would still be like, no, screw you, you're wrong because aquariums are evil or Mm -hmm. whatever. And I'm just curious, like, what's your strategy with that? How do you handle that? And not only how do you handle it professionally, but how do you handle it personally? Because these people are your friends. And I know when it's my friends, whether they're actual friends or even just people that I really like on social media, I take that personally. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. tell me about your thought on it. 
Yeah. So we'll start personally. Um, I think so. I've been in the social media world for over 10 years now. And I think in the beginning, people would say things and it was like they had personally just stabbed me in the heart. (laughs) Yes. I was like, how dare you? Do you not know me? Like, but of course, they don't know me. Um, Also, people are so bold behind a screen. It is insane. We all know this. You, what people would say behind a screen, they would rarely say to your face. Although sadly, they're starting to more now in the real world. They I really are. think that's something that social media is doing. I, I agree. It's insane. But yeah, anyway, that's but you a are right. whole you, other yes, topic. Yes, yes, yes. But you are correct. That um, is but. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I used to take a lot of things very personally. And for me, just because I'm always checking in on my own mental health, Um, and making sure what I'm doing serves me the best, I kind of had to start practicing letting things go. So, you know, if we want to be very therapeutic about it, you know, when you're feeling an emotion, I don't like to say a negative emotion because all of your emotions are emotions. So if you're say angry or upset, um, kind of practicing, allowing that to flow through you and accepting the feeling of being angry. Um, I do the same thing. This sounds very like, of me, but I do the same thing with negative social media most of the time. We'll come back to when it's not most of the time. Um, I kind of let it flow through me because it doesn't affect me at the end of the day. These people don't know me at the end of the day. I know me. My friends know me. If anyone wants to attack me personally, which people have, like if I'm out doing like a video and I'm front facing in front of the camera, people have said things before that aren't the nicest, but it's also like, eh, whatever. Um, so that's kind of personally what I do occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will, um, you know, thank God for my office buddy, Amaja. I'll just say them out loud. You know, I'll be like, oh, are you kidding me? And then I'll just be like, so-and-so Cheryl from Cincinnati thinks she knows what's up. And she just said, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, she doesn't even know anything, you know, like she doesn't even go here. And, <laughs> Um, Amaja's like my, you know, my wing woman, she's my ride or die. She'd be like, yeah, what the heck? And like, you know, probably not what the heck, but as I'm (laughs) being adventure aquarium today, we will uh, say what the heck. Um, and it's kind of nice to have that, you know, you get out that anxiety, that upset quickly, and then you move on. So that's personally, professionally, um, In the beginning, I was also very hyped, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Ah." Now it is very, um, it's self-regulating, which I love. People will come, if you give it enough time, like, because I see it almost immediately, right? Because it's my job. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to address this. If I give it two hours, you know, Bob will write some horrible comment about um, all of our animals deserve to be back in the ocean. And I'm like, one of our animals is missing a leg. They're not going to do well. Um, but you know, I'm not going to say that someone who is a follower, a friend of the aquarium will go on there themselves and they'll either a just kind of like put it down as it is and be very factual about it, which I think is always the best response or B sometimes people will be sassy back. Um, (laughs) which, you know, like inside it brings me a small bit of joy. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It is the best response. Even if it's not the best response. Even if it's not, I'm like, he, 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 I got a little glee off of that. Um, and I probably shouldn't, but I do. Um, so professionally, a lot of times I just let things self-regulate. Um, And then also kind of what I learned is there is some people and I can tell by how they write, what they're writing and how often they're writing that it does not matter what I say at all. They are never going to respond or listen. A lot of times people, when they comment on social media, they just want to get their opinion out and show the world that they're so smart or like whatever. Wow. That was a lot of like internal like judgment coming out <laughs> but it was also very real i mean i deal it with is. these same people yes. like yeah i i've had some crazies yeah like, like yeah. you get those people like i have a, i could tell you a list of who those people are but i will not <laughs> um but you know i just ignore them there's nothing i'm going to be able to do and honestly a lot of times them putting a comment out there looks worse on them yeah. actually i would say all the time it looks worse on mm-hmm. them than it looks on us at all um, and then there's the, the few, it's fairly rare that I will step in and write something 
usually if I'm writing something, it is in response to like an animal welfare complaint. Right. So like this exhibit is too small. That's a common one. Um, and we can explain that, oh, they have a night house. Oh, they have, you know, this other area that they fly in. You know, we have an upstairs aviary. You know, all those things, those are important because a lot of people don't know because they don't see. And I think that's a valid concern. Um, but that's also something that we don't just like parade around. We do behind the scenes stuff, but we're not like, look at our entire facility. And right. that's, you know, part of safety as well as just kind of visually people don't really like to see behind the scenes stuff as much. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's more of a factual answer than a feelings answer. Cause like you said, some people want to get their feelings out there and you're like, okay, well I'm going to respond in the scientific, you know, regulated and perfected answer. Mm -hmm. And you know, hopefully that alleviates this feeling that you're having. Yes. If it, if it doesn't, you can go ahead and do further and investigation or mm -hmm. go, go look it up online or something. I agree. Yeah. This is Sam. She's yes, coming sorry. in. Yeah. 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 She yeah. added yeah. in a little <laughs> fact versus feelings. Thing. I don't know if we do either, fact but versus don't. Feelings is always yeah. Fact versus feelings is yes. That makes a lot of sense. I actually really like that terminology. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm happy to engage with people that seem worth engaging with. Sure. Um, and sometimes I find out that I'm wrong and then I'm like, Oh, now I'm in it. Yeah. But normally like, yeah, like, you know, Sam, you mentioned before we were recording here that like, you've seen me jump in on stuff and like try to help out. I think that is an important thing that I do as an inside outsider. Yes. I have an amazing understanding of this right. industry now. I have been behind the scenes all over the country. Mm -hmm. I have seen things that people don't get to see and can right. describe them. Right. But I'm also not paid by any of y'all. Right. And I've also had moments where I've called out zoos and aquariums when things weren't sure. great. I've tried to work behind the scenes or whatever or sometimes on the pod. Sure. And um, – so I can be a trusted voice if someone will listen and right. will let me explain that. But like I've had people be like, you know, oh, you're defending whatever Bob's aquarium because mm -hmm. we're just everything's Bob today. Everything um, is Bob. And <laughs> um, Bob. you know, you're you're defending Bob's aquarium and you 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 work for them, so blah blah. Or they pay you, and mm -hmm. I was like, no, they don't. No. I, I'm actually a member, or I'm actually, a free I, you know, agent. yeah, yeah. I, no, I would uh, trust me if if I could. Uh, I could probably get bigger by exposing something, right. but like right. I go to these places, I see the things I'm comfortable or yeah. I wouldn't feature them. Right. And honestly, this one reason I've stuck with accredited facilities, there are good non-accredited facilities mm -hmm. out there. There truly are, but I can't vet that. Yep. And my biggest fear, and I mean, this could still happen at an accredited facility. There are places that have issues mm -hmm. and, and you know, that changes, but my biggest fear is I'm going to show up somewhere. And I'm going to do an episode and at the end I'm going to be like, well, I can't release this. Yep. That was trash mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and and it had, uh, being a credit or being a credit helps normally me feel better about that. But um, it's been really cool. Like the places that let me behind the scenes yeah. and I see stuff. I don't have issues normally. Right. I see how great it right. all is. I you see, see people interacting with yeah. their animals. Right. And so I can be that voice. But again, only if. They're just not an idiot troll. Right, you right. Know? Well, as a social media manager, we uh, appreciate when people who are educated come to our defense because then we don't have to do it. And it's very nice. That's actually good to know because I was thinking about that there, there's a controversy happening right now by the time I talk about it in Zoo News this week. But I mean, this will be out in a couple months, so I won't even mm -hmm. say what it is right now. But um, uh, and people are just being idiots about something. And I, I almost dove in and then I was like, I don't know if this facility would want me to do that because of how they respond. Yeah, to. I think it's like a, it's it's interesting. It's a case by case. Yeah. So yeah, I do know sometimes probably it would not be the best. Yeah, but I think um, I'm good at judging. But that. yeah, yeah, I yeah. bet you are. And honestly, it also depends on where my mental capacity is that day. Right? Do you want to <laughs> take on a troll who's just going to troll you back? No. Yeah, and it's like cool. I've been doom scrolling and I'm in a bad headspace, and now I'm going to attack this person and get into right. it. Right. Yay. Right. Because I have I have gotten I don't know if, if you have encountered any of this, and I, I would hope that being a like professional facility, you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've gotten. Um, I've had to reach out to the police. I've had people threaten me. I've had people try to find. And I mean, like my info, like my phone number stuff is out there um, for my drumming stuff, you know, and, and, and I've had people call. Um, I had somebody threaten to, to show up at my house Get and out. I wasn't, no one was home at the time. It was actually kind of, I was like, if this nut is actually going to do that, they're going to show up to an empty house. I'm on tour and you know, I, all is well. That's terrifying. But like, it's, it's interesting. Oh my you know? God. Yeah. Well, Adventure Aquarium has state police on site, so. <laughs> 
and also just, just random is. people driving by on the pedestrian pathway we also sometimes. Have random so people. like if yeah. you show up to attack somebody, you might get run over. It's true. <laughs> there are cars everywhere and Yeah, there was just a person driving there. They were just driving. Yeah. You know how they drive there. Yeah. I can't stop looking at this view. I know. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Really nice. yeah. yeah. But all right, so we have been going for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and maybe at some point we could have talked about the aquarium, but we didn't, but that's fine. No, that's I'm fine. Kidding. We can do it next time. We'll do part two. Yeah. Um but so um there the last two things I always ask, of course, are is there a conservation organization that you would like to give a shout out to that we definitely don't need to pause right now while you look up their no, information I'm totally online. That I know exactly what I want to talk about. Perfect. They're called Sand Cob. Yes, I love Sand you Cob. You love Sand yes. Cob. We love African penguins here as we do have a colony of African penguins here. Come see them. They're very cool. Come see Cliff, our oldest African penguin. He just turned 35 and he's very cute and old. Um, <laughs> We also have little blue penguins, just so you yeah. know. I got one a plug of the few some. facilities yes, that have them. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, actually yeah. had four chicks this year. I know. We've which talked is about super cute. It's oh so my gosh. Thank you for talking about them. They're very, very cute. We're naming the last two like right now. So we will release that shortly. They're very cute. I'm um, just saying a penguin named Rossafari would not suck. Just putting it into the world. <laughs> you know what? I, I love putting things into the world like that. I think that's a great idea. One of the options for a name, I think I can put this on here. I wouldn't be able to put this on social media, but one of the options for one of the names is Brincy, Brincia, Brincy, oh, Brincia, which is the name of the incubator that the eggs would go in. That's amazing. And I really want that to be one of the names. So that's amazing. fingers crossed. I am rooting for that one because i think it's funny nice because <laughs> i want to do one of those tiktoks that's like show what you're named after and it's an oh, incubator so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um, um but yeah, yeah so Cobb. sand cob, sand cob <laughs> they advocate advocate for african penguins and other shorebirds um on the african coast and i think they just do really cool work honestly if i lived down in south africa i would intern with them because they do really cool work so that's yeah. who i'm shouting out nice check them out on social media they have a really good instagram they do yeah it's very cool very cool very very cool and then it's time now don't you know we've come to the end of the show but there's one tale left to go you're gonna laugh and say oh no it's time for the rossifari poop story it is time for the poop story poop story sorry you realize that that's going to be one of them that I throw into episodes now, right? Perfect. Just by doing that, you we are now, just, that will be a we thing. Can, like, bring it in. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give you a poop story. Poop story. Um, mine is not, I mean, like, I like telling the story because I think it is funny now because I lived it um, and I'm over it, but it's kind of scary. <laughs> so when I used to intern at the zoo, interns were allowed to drive um, the golf carts. And I work specifically with um, the tigers, the otters, occasionally hoofstock. Shout out to Kim. I don't know if she listens to this, but she was my guide, my keeper who was in charge of me. And I loved her dearly. Love her dearly. Um, But I also took care of, helped out with the elephants. And when I say took care of, you know, I did the grunt work. I did all the cleaning, right? Um, Which is fine. I love cleaning. I love mucking stalls specifically. You like cleaning? I like cleaning. Ma'am, I've seen your office. (laughs) Sir, sir, I'm not going to throw people under the bus on the podcast. My corner was clean. (laughs) I like literally once a month just go in there and just clean everything. Um, Anyway, so I was also part of the elephant crew, which was, you know, lifelong goals because I think most people love elephants. Mm -hmm. I have always been obsessed. I don't tell people I'm obsessed because then all you get is elephant gifts, right? You know, when you tell people (laughs) you love an animal and they're like, Oh, that's their whole personality. Like I bet you get red panda stuff. So much red panda. Yeah. Which like, I know you're not upset about, but so much, but like I would get figurines and like Mm -hmm. jewelry and like specifically jewelry. Like I don't want to wear, I love supporting animals, but like, I don't want a little, uh, anyway, okay, I digress. Yeah, why would you wear animal jewelry, he says, Why would you wear, as he puts away his sea turtle really necklace. cool sea, but see, that's cool. <laughs> I would get like. Which, by the way, was purchased at the gift shop at Adventure oh. Aquarium. Adventure Aquarium. <laughs> we love that place. So that you have to rotate. I mean, <laughs> that, it's actually kind of an issue that I have. He's yeah, like, I could. Yeah. But see, that's cool. I would get like tchotchke. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, anyway. I have a lot of things that I'm like, oh, It was okay. too much. It was too much. Poop story, poop story. 
Sam is chanting poop story, poop story, because I, I, uh, I got distracted because I easily get distracted. So I'm focusing, which is also why I don't make eye contact so I can focus. Um, okay. So I was also part of the elephant crew care team. Um, and I did all the cleaning, right? Elephants create a lot of mess as many people know. And we were as interns, we would drive the little club carts, the little golf carts into the exhibit when obviously the elephants are off exhibit, we'd pick up all the poop and then we'd drive out. We'd, you know, set up their enrichment for the day for like elephants. It's like giant flipping logs with like, you know, hay and random places. And it was awesome. The Reed Park Zoo elephant um, habitat is really, really cool if you ever get to go visit. Um, So I was an intern and there was a new intern who had just started And I'm not going to call her out by name at all, but she wanted to drive. And I was like, okay, yeah, she can drive. That's cool. I let her drive. And I don't know if I'm able to explain this to your ears, but basically in the exhibit, there is a very steep hill that then goes down to a divot that then becomes the wall. And then the people are behind the wall. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Hill divot wall. Hill divot wall. So very steep. So she was driving the club car full of poop, mind you. And, um, this is a club cart. So it's not a golf cart. There's no top on it. She's driving it and she's hitting the side of, she drives back and hits the side of the steep hill. Right going very fast. And I remember I'm like holding on. I'm like joking, right? Cause I'm not her boss. I'm another intern. I'm just more seasoned if you will. And I'm like, ah, slow down speed ranger, like speed racer. I literally <laughs> was like, speed, ha, ha, you know, like finger gunning, like, ha, 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 like joking, but also like slow down, right. dude. Like this is fast. She hits the edge of the, um, hill, steep hill, going too fast and then tries to correct her turn too fast. Mm. The whole cart flips over. I push her out to the side. That's like the flat side. And I was about to turn around so I could show you visually, but then you can't hear. So (laughs) I push her out as we're kind of turning. So she flies to like the flat side, but with the gravity I go under the cart. Oh, shoot. Um, and it completely flips over on top of me with all of the elephant poop. <laughs> oh, no. And drags me down the hill. Oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really bad. I'm, like, laughing, but it was really bad. Yeah. Sam is aghast. <laughs> I'm uh, going to tell you what she looks like on the side. This is actually why Lauren works at an aquarium now, yeah. because they don't do golf carts yeah. at aquariums. I only at zoos. do golf carts. <laughs> um... And, you know, I don't even know if I'm supposed to tell this story, but whatever. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, like, thinking back. I'm like, did I sign paperwork? No, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> I was in college. It's fine. Ago. Um, I fly or I, like, roll, skid down this hill. And I somehow, I don't know how I did this because I not only, this is sounding like I'm bragging, but I'm not. I not only pushed her out of the cart, I positioned myself so that when it flipped over, I wasn't crushed because I was in the seated area, like where the dip is, where your legs would go. I like moved my body in there, but I still got dragged down by the cart on top of me. So then I'm just laying there and elephant poop is everywhere, (laughs) everywhere, but it's not on me. It's just like surrounding me. Like it was like, I would imagine if like a drone was above me, it would be an amazing shot. (laughs) Cause I'm just like, what the hell just happened? And there's just like, you know, a cart on top of me. It's like wheels are spinning still, right? And there's no one around. And then like everything's quiet. And then everyone's like, oh my God. And they're like running towards me. I'm uh, miming running, just so you know. They're running towards me. And I'm just like standing or like laying down there. And someone comes and just pulls me out from underneath, which after I did my wilderness first responder training, I found out that that was not the way to take care of a possible neck or back injury. No, it is not. Um, Thankfully, I was mostly okay. So she yanks me out and they're like, oh my God, are you okay? And I didn't know at the time I was having an adrenaline rush. Um, And I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally good. Like totally fine. I just need to sit here for a second. So I'm sitting there um, and I'm like, oh, that was really crazy. That was crazy. And they're like turning the cart back over. They're like, 
the poop we already picked up, they're like putting it back into the car. <laughs> like we got to get ready for opening. And I'm just like sitting there like, what the hell? And so um, they drive me to the office because they have to like take a statement or whatever. And then when they find out what it is, they're like, you have to go to the emergency room. And I was like, do I have to? Like, I feel fine. I'm sitting in the office and my, I call her my keeper, but Kim, my head keeper in charge of me, she comes in. She's like, holy crap. I just heard on the radio. She did not say crap, by the way. Holy crap. I just heard on the radio (laughs) that an intern got hurt and it's you. Like, are you okay? And right when she said, are you okay? The adrenaline dropped and Uh it all hit me immediately. And I started like sobbing and the pain hit me. Um, and my back was on fire. It hurts so bad. So I went to the emergency room. They had to take x-rays. Thank God I didn't break anything, but I had, uh, pulled and like strained a lot of my back muscles. So they were very, very, very messed up. Um, they gave me muscle relaxants and major pain medication. The, uh, that day, cause I would go and I would intern in the morning before my college classes. That day was one of my finals. <gasps> I call my professor and I'm like, I just really don't think I could come in. Like I was in an accident. My back hurts really bad. And he's like, Oh my God, like woman tears. Ah." (laughs) (laughs) And like, you know, I'm trying to be cool, but I'm also like in a lot of freaking pain. And he is like, it's fine. It's fine. Like you're fine. Like don't come in. We'll take, we'll reschedule it. And I'm like, thank you so much. And he's like, ah, like wanting to get off the phone with me so fast. (laughs) Um, and so gets off the phone. I go home. I have to ice it, pain medication, muscle relaxers, whatever. Like three days later, I go back to school and I have to take a different final. And I was like, so uncomfortable sitting in my desk, right? I know this is not about poop anymore, but I'm finishing this. Um, and this has just been one long therapy session for you. You know so what? We might as well this stick is with like it. who I am. This is why people <laughs> talk to me. They're like, let's just talk it out. And I'm like, tell me your problems. That's why I put up strong boundaries now. Um, I like go into my final and I turn to my um, one of my friends, one of my classmates, Jen, and I was like, I have to take muscle relaxants because I can't sit in this desk. I am in so much pain. So I take the muscle relaxants and that was my first time taking them because I was trying to avoid them. (laughs) Oh Oh, no, no. it was so bad. I like fell asleep during a final. (laughs) I like couldn't not, it was so bad. And I'm already very sensitive to medication. So this was like, Oh my God. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. And then thank God I like rode my bike home, but like, was that kind of riding under the influence of something? Probably. Thankfully my house was like a minute away, but oh man. So that's my poop story. Poop story. I got a really gnarly injury and that's what led to me having an injury that then got exasperated when I worked in the national park. And that's what got me into social media. Holy crap. And we're tied back it all to together. the beginning. Oh! She's in marketing y'all. <laughs> I know how to tell a story. Yeah. Incredible. You're welcome. Well, yeah. Good, night, folks. Uh, good, good job. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, y'all. So there you have it. You know, I love having a friend on the podcast, and Lauren is definitely that. I hope y'all enjoyed the goofiness and the fun that we had as much as I did. You know, I actually just want to take a moment here to say thank you to everyone at Adventure Aquarium. The team there has been so wildly supportive of me and the podcast. And um, even though we've still got one more episode coming from there next week, uh, which, you know, is the uh, successor to this one, as you'll get to hear from Sam uh, actually on mic. um, You know, it's just been really meaningful to have my home aquarium support the podcast so much. It's it's a cool feeling, y'all. So so thank you for that. And of course, thank you to my Red Panda level patrons, Dr. Laura Shank and Dr. Stephen Williamson. Uh, Don't forget to be back here on Friday for Zoo News and then next Tuesday for our last episode from Adventure Aquarium, this time anyway. And uh, remember, friends, until then, I have to tell you that the word credits backwards is Steiderk. The Rossafari Podcast is produced, hosted, and engineered by John Rossi. Editing and fact-checking by John and Dr. Zoe Rossi. Our theme song is Sevens by Nathan Burke, performed by Nathan and John. 
interrupting John theme and additional voices by Taylor Isaac Gray. You can reach John directly on Instagram and Facebook at Ross Safari or by email at rossafaripod at gmail.com. Ross Safari is part of the Daydreamer Media Network. Now, stop listening to me and go visit a zoo. Poop story.